Welcome to the very hot Vargas Museum. Uh, my name is Randall and I'm one of the curatorial team. So um, apologies for the air conditioning system. And welcome to the third floor, the South Wing Gallery. And this is uh, Sandra Dance and this is her exhibit. The exhibition runs in uh, until April 30. And a quick introduction of Sandra is that she received or she graduated from uh, our fine arts um, in the, over there, um, Magna Cum Laude uh, in 2010. And uh, she had also a master's in photography at Savannah College of Art and Design in Hong Kong, where she was given a Latin Honor Excelsus Laureate in 2015, last year. Um, she has exhibited in Hong Kong and in different institutions in the Philippines, such as Uno Morato, um, the Corridor Gallery at the Fine Arts, um, Rockwell LRI in Makati, and the Cultural Center of the Philippines. So uh, we're very thankful that she has time for us to uh, discuss, and I think uh, since it's just uh, around 20 of us. Uh, let's make it more intimate after um, she presents her lecture. If you have any questions with what you see, um, we can discuss more informally, I guess. It would be better for us. So uh, we can talk about the production of the work, also the interaction or the history of her work prior coming to Vargas Museum, which I think she would be discussing. And of course, as you can see, uh, this is not just an exhibition um, of her works, but this is also an interaction of the works, the old works from the Vargas archives. So um, uh, without further chica, here, here is Sandra. Okay. Hello, everyone. I uh, want you to front row. You guys want to move? These are the only seats available. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Oops, I've got to turn this on. Um, so thanks to everyone for coming in the middle of the day when it's very hot. I hope, I'm not gonna take too much of your time, I'm just gonna breeze through it so we can all start breathing the fresh air again. So I just, my lecture is going to cover sort of the genesis of my project and my, some of the ideas behind it. Please feel free to ask me any, any questions at all, sobrang welcome. So um, my project is called Iconolatria, it's a, it's a, uh, Italian word that means the worship of images and I'm going to get into the history of that word and the history of it in relationship to the church and the production of images subsequently. Uh, but in my case, in Econolatria is the name of my overarching project. So the ones downstairs uh, by the yung mga boys, these uh, images up here, the stampitas and these on the wall are all under this one big project. So I'll go through them one by one. The first project is called I Am. And that's the series over here on the right side. Uh, it's a series of portraits depicting the self. Not myself, it's the self. And I'll discuss why that is later on. Um, this project, uh, you, this is the installation that uh, I did when I did my thesis show in Hong Kong. So it looked a little different and there are a couple of pieces missing uh, because some of my models were only okay if the work was shown was not shown in the Philippines. So they asked me to take it down if I was ever going to show here. Um, so that's why some of them are missing. But this is a series of portraits ex exploring sanctification of the other, so someone else other than the self. And lastly, so this is the tiny, tiny installation I had of this Stampitas artwork in Hong Kong. Uh, so the Stampitas explores sanctification in the context of ephemera or objects. Uh, it, if you guys grew up in a Catholic, uh, back, with a back, Catholic background like I did, I'm sure you'll know that there are a lot of ephemera and objects associated with sort of that faith. Um, and I find that very, very interesting even if I no longer consider myself Catholic, I still find that um, incredibly fascinating. Okay, so what is sanctification anyway, which is sort of the central idea behind a lot of my work? Uh, it's difficult to find a neutral, secular definition of the word sanctification because it has been sort of 
uh, sequestered by religious culture. Um, in history, though, this has been done through the, the creation of religious images or sacred images. It's, it's the idea that, that um, something can be set apart. To set something apart is to sanctify. Um, that's just the most basic, not loaded definition of what that means. So uh, I have some examples of how this has been done historically in the church. Um, this is just a little bit of the art history background for those that are interested. So this is a Gothic painting. It's the Annunciation, if you are familiar with the story. Uh, Saint Margaret and Saint Anne Sansos by the Italian Gothic, Gothic, sorry, Gothic artist Simone Martini and Lippo Memi. It's very ornate, it's super gold. There's a lot of supernatural elements, if you notice, because this isn't a scene that you would see in real life unless you live in a golden palace or something. But ordinarily, this is not something that you would really be able to observe. So there, is a lot of, there are a lot of added elements and colors. There's, they've made the scene seem more elevated, seem more um, hyper-real than it is. It made this very familiar story of the Annunciation, which at the time, uh, I'm sure people had already sort of heard over and over to make it sort of different and interesting. And if you think about the context in which these images were seen, this is an altar piece. So in a church, like an, in where this was, in the old Italian church that it was, people would go on pilgrimages to see these images. They would go far and wide and they, to see this church, and then nandun lang sila. They, they needed something that was parang worth it, diba? They needed it to be a little more than just, well, well it's a painting, whatever. Uh, that's sort of the reason behind some of these elements. Um, the other thing is for parishioners of these churches, people who were there all the time, seeing the same image over and over, medyo, di ba? Parang, if, it, if there isn't this intense amount of detail, uh, it, it's not really, parang mawala siya sa isip mo. Parang hindi siya ganun ka, ka striking. So that's the reasoning behind some of these elements. Um, and I'm gonna jump forward a few like centuries. This is a, a famous artwork by Parma Giannino, a Mannerist painter. It's done in a completely different style. There aren't so many supernatural elements in this, but what he does is he exaggerates the form. So this is called the Madonna with a long neck for obvious reasons, kasi ang haba ng neck niya. Tapos pansin niyo yung baby, that's a really long baby. <laughs> it doesn't look like a regular baby. But, um, so the, this sort of exaggeration of the forms was his way of making the scene strange. So this is a, an idea that I repeat throughout the bodies of work. The idea of making something strange uh, in order to sort of uh, enrich this idea of sanctification or to encourage uh, worshipers to to worship things, they are made strange. Uh, this is an artwork by William Adolph Borgero in 1899. It's Madonna of the Lilies. So we see the return of some supernatural elements. Meron ng halo, uh, meron ng kind of like the supernatural glow. All, again, not a scene that you would ordinarily see in your daily life because the figures that are represented are not supposedly from your everyday life. So all of these images have something weird about them, something that makes the people and events depicted parang a little stranger, parang a little distant, a little bit not like us, right? Um, so they're, for all of the reasons I mentioned, parang to keep them more engaging, to hold someone's attention, to keep people, from think, to keep people thinking, to keep the mind active while they're being seen. Um, and I enjoyed these references. I, 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 if you'll notice, I focused mostly on parang Marian sanctification, so sanctification of Mary in artwork, because I find that really interesting also historically, because that's one of the more divisive issues in the Council of Trent. Are you guys familiar with the Council of Trent? Anyone know? So the Council of Trent is a council that was in Trent. They, they, what they did was they talked about this issue of this, the divinity of Mary. Parang dun nagkaroon ng parang the split in the church was found in, uh, or was sort of discussed at the Council of Trent. Um, this is historically sort of where uh, Protestantism breaks away from Catholicism. Parang nagiging two separate schools of thought na siya. Are you guys familiar with the differences between those two? 
So, okay, I don't know if I should go into that because that's a little heavy, but look it up, you know, Protestantism and Catholicism are, are uh, their split originates at the Council of Trent. So one of the divisive issues there was how people treat images. So people were coming to the church and saying, hindi na ang Diyos ang sinasamba ng tao. They're sinasamba na nila yung mga imahe. Uh, in a, parang, they call it an abuse. It's the abuse of the uh, images, right? Uh, people were, using, were worshiping the images instead of using them as a tool to worship God. Something like that. So this was an extreme violation. Like if you're familiar with the Ten Commandments, the first commandment was being violated here. So they had to do something about it. And what the church did was, sabi nila, okay, okay, okay. People like these pictures too much. They're starting to pray to the pictures. They're worshiping the pictures. How do we resolve this? How do we make it not so? Uh, what the church did was they instituted um, guidelines. They instituted conventions, like pictures can't be too beautiful. They can't be beautiful past a certain extent. How they measured that, I don't know. Um, and they just, they told the congregation that, listen, you guys are, aren't allowed to worship images. You're only supposed to venerate them. They're supposed to be the, um, they're supposed to be tools to help you uh, find God, speak to God, worship God, but they're not supposed to be what you worship. Uh, so the word that they use there is veneration. Parang yung images, sige, okay lang nanandyan, pero we just venerate them. And I find that interesting because my question that I raise is what is the practical difference between worship and veneration? Ano yung sabihin nun? Parang... I'm only going to pray until a certain point. But how does it how does it apply? What does it look like in a practical terms? Um, so from this question, are you guys with me so far? You, okay, all right, great. Uh, with this question, I realize that there are some parallels in terms of how we think about ourselves these days. Um, so this is the last bunch of profile pictures that I uploaded. So I believe that a lot of the language of making strange, making things strange, or sanctifying, carries over into the way we create and deal with images today. So the mere fact that I have profile pictures, and I'm not yung gray na silhouette or whatever, na parang pag wala kang profile picture, that's me setting myself apart. That's me making myself distinct and different. Um, and it's me making myself unique. And these days, if you, if you think about it, if your profile looks like this, you're no one. Parang no one's gonna believe that you're a real person anymore. Diba? Parang naging necessity na siya for us to be our own sort of um, council of trend. We are the ones that are making all of these decisions now about what can and cannot go into images, into our images. Uh, and if you'll think about it, yung language of sanctification ng church and the language of how we talk about things like self-representation on the internet are pretty similar. Uh, we do it to differentiate. We do it to negotiate our identity, whether to flatter or to enhance a quality. We create, we cure, sorry, the word is curate. We curate ourselves um, to sort of remind people that you are, hence the name of the first project, right? So these images are also under the control of a master. If in the past they were under the control of the church, now they're under your control. You were the one deciding. So it's really tricky then. Sa akin, parang nahirapan na rin ako mag-negotiate ng idea na I am my own PR person. Nagkakaroon ng feedback loop eh. Kasi ako lang din yung tumitingin and ako rin yung parang nandun and everything. I'm gonna give you guys an easy example. Okay, fine. So here. This is something I posted three years ago, okay? You now, at first glance, mukha lang siyang any any. I just posted a weird picture of myself. Wala lang. Didn't, it, it's easy to think that I didn't think too much about it and I just put it up online. But let's break down the process of how this image got on my Facebook, right? So I've taken a picture of myself knowing that I was going to show it to people and it's going to be on Facebook. So there's a certain person that I am on Facebook that's different from whom I am on Instagram and LinkedIn and whatever other sort of accounts I have. I have a Facebook persona. 
and I had to decide whether or not it fit in with that version of me that I put online. Uh, so, nag-decide pa ako, oh, ano, e-edit ko ba to? Lalagyan ko ba ng filter? I decided against it because I said, eh, pinapakita ko lang naman yung plastic cat na yun eh. Parang bakit ko pa i-edit, whatever. Which is, that's a decision. Um, and it may not be conventionally flattering, which is the easy way to think about curation. It's just about making yourself look good. But it enhances certain qualities that I value. Humor, irreverence, cat toys, di ba? Parang lahat yun, nandun siya sa image. So, without really realizing it, there's so much thought that goes into something that looks as stupid as this. That's my own value judgment. <laughs> um, so, uh, whether we realize it or not, we are making these decisions. We're trying to make ourselves look strange or not look like, you know, the gray silhouettes. Um, and then when you look back at it and you, yun na yung feedback loop na parang, ah, ganyan pala yung itsura ko when I do this, when I do that. Um, so, yeah. So, it, to bring it into sort of the contemporary time, the question transforms for me into what is the practical difference between self-representation and narcissism? Because it's really easy to just assume that because you do this, because you curate yourself, because you post things on your Facebook that you're just a narcissist. But um, I don't want to jump to that conclusion as quickly. So let's think about the things that lead up to that whole idea. So let, that brings us to this body of work, Young I Am. Yung title niya, so that's this work on the right, or on your left. Yung I am, the title comes from two things. First, that's how God introduced himself to Moses in Exodus. Yung nagtatanong siya parang may burning bush and stuff. I'm not really too familiar with the story, but he says, uh, when he introduces himself to Moses, he says, instead of saying a name, he says, I am, right? Uh, and that also used to be uh, I don't know if you remember this. I'm not that old, but when nung nag sa start pa lang yung parang status update sa timeline, may naka fill in na dun automatic na text na kalagay din I am. And yun you put like I am dancing, whatever. Like you put things in that. So I thought that was an interesting sort of uh, duplication. Um, the central artwork in this project is this one. It's called the Annunciation. Um, and the reason it's central is because if you think about the story of the Annunciation, if you guys aren't familiar, that's when the angel comes to Mary and tells her, oh, you're going to be this important person and you're going to give birth to the mother of God and everything. And that's sort of the beginning of when she appears in the Bible. That's when she becomes important. And I think that that's what we do with ourselves. We are the angel and we're also Mary. We're telling ourselves na, hey, you're important. It's time, it's your time to shine. Parang ikaw na yung, ikaw, ikaw na, parang ganun. Um, so that's sort of the idea behind this image. And it, and it, uh, it transfers into, uh, into the other images there. Uh, in particular, I highlight this picture as the reason that I don't call these self-portraits. They're not really of me. Like, I don't go to the gym, <laughs> never been in my life. I've never used a yoga ball. I don't even think I'm using it right in this picture. I don't, these are portraits of what, of, of actions that we see repeated um, in sort of this daily existence. It's a mundane action, but it's somehow important enough for us to tell people that we do it. Um, so that's sort of the idea behind these images being portraits of the self rather than myself. Um, and I'd like you guys to think about this image because this became relevant again for me. I made this work in 2014. It's like pretty old. But something happened in the past few months that I thought, parang, oh, that sort of reminds me of the work I did. Uh, are you guys familiar with this picture? This is Kim Kardashian. Shama, shama yun? Kim Kardashian's naked selfie. So she got into so much trouble, not trouble, but like she started a lot of people talking because of this image, diba? Parang people either were like, yeah, you go girl, or they were like, shame on you, you're giving the world your body. Either way, the, neg the reaction was pretty polarizing. Nobody was really, parang, parang everyone had something to say about it. And my idea about this is, 
Ako kasi personally, I don't care. Like, I don't think it's important. But everyone else seems to react so weirdly, powerfully to this image of a naked wi- woman. When there's naked women everywhere, like they're on the cover of FHM and everything, like you just have to go to 7-Eleven and look through the magazines and you'll see worse things than this. Granted, this is pretty naked, but why is this so much more, uh, I don't know, polarizing than those images? And I read an article about it saying uh, the problem isn't that she's showing her body, it's that she's choosing to show it. Parang, um, yung iba, yung FHM kasi mga girly magazines, mga porn kasi, we are just viewers. Parang, it's a, it's a detached thing na parang there's someone watching these women. But in this case, she's watching herself. Siya yung, she's the one making the choice to sort of show her body. She's the one looking at herself and saying, hey, this is worth seeing. Why don't I post a selfie on Instagram? Um, and where the, wherever you stand on that, the fact that she is a woman who has decided to look at her own body is what's significant about this picture, whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. But that's what's so weird about it, um, or that's why it's it's gotten such a kind of weird reaction. So anyway, na isip ko lang din kasi na parang bathroom selfie siya, which is sort of what that one is. I love that you can kind of see her. I know it's not probably not a toilet, but to me, I I just want to believe that it's a toilet. So, I yeah. So think about that. Um, all right. So moving on from that project, these cards behind me, yung stampitas, uh, they explore sort of verbal sanctification. So in Catholicism, we have prayers. We have uh, there are some stampitas here that belong to Marina Vargas. You can see them. The real, parang sila yung the real deal. Um, there's this constant reminder um, or of, of what things are holy. Catholics have scapulars, they have little crucifixes, they like to put things in their car. It's always, it's everywhere being reminded, even while you're doing the most mundane things. Uh, and I kind of felt like that sort of akin to microblogging when you think about what Instagram is and what Twitter is. It's this constant repetition of um, this was important, and this was important, and this was important. That, that sort of uh, accompaniment to mundanity was the jumping off point for this project. So if you guys haven't had a look at them, these are meant to be handled, by the way. I would really like it if people could actually touch these. Unfortunately, some of our, uh, how do I say it, other brothers and sisters, we're taking some of the pieces of art, so that's a problem. So instead, we just have a line here that you can walk through and read the backs of. So the backs of these are actual tweets. They're real, I didn't write them, I just found them online and matched them to the images I was taking of myself. Um, and you'll see what I mean about them being constantly reminding people of, of, uh, of these tiny things about yourself. Okay, so this work doesn't really translate at this scale, so if you guys wanna come over later and have a look and then we can talk about it, that'd be great. Okay, so last, yung body of work sa baba, sa may stairs. I'm sure everyone saw it coming up here. All right, so before we talk about that body of work, I'm also gonna give you a little bit more history and context. This is the work of Michelangelo Merisi de Caravaggio. He's also known as Caravaggio. Now, if you are not a Christian or a Catholic, this painting just looks like a guy that fell off his horse. But the title of it is actually Paul on the Road to Damascus. Um, in the Bible, this is the story of how uh, the Apostle Paul um, kind of met the Lord. Like he was persecuting Christians and then on his way to Damascus, he was blinded by a light and everything, and then he was blind, and then that's sort of what, uh, where his transition into Christianity happened. So that was this pivotal moment. But you wouldn't know that from the picture, compared to the images that I showed earlier, which had a lot more parang supernatural, flashy lights, the central character is always glowing, right? Ito, parang mukha lang siyang 
it just looks like a scene. It just looks like a daily scene. So si, si Caravaggio na circumvent niya yung edicts of the Council of Trent by using the language of the secular to make strange. In other words, he has made the strange stranger pa. So kinuha niya yung mga parang what were already then conventional religious scenes and made them even weirder by bringing them into the real world. He made them realistic. Uh, he removed the supernatural elements. He brought it into the real world. He used unidealized models. Yung mga models niya, mga kaibigan niya lang. If you notice the other models, they're like perfect skin, perfect Italian face. These are like mga manong ng Italy. Basically, yung ginagamit niya. Um, there's also this one, um, which is, oh, I forgot what this one is called, but that's supposed to be an apostle named Thomas the Doubter, examining the wounds of Christ, because he was uh, doubtful that he had risen from the dead. But if you didn't know that story, how would you even know who Jesus was in this image. Parang you, ha you would need a lot of sort of context to already know the story uh, because it looks so sort of scenic. It's just, it looks like it could be a photograph of daily life. Um, so his project was to break this automatic way that we think about religious figures, about the, the Christ story, biblical characters. He broke it by making it normal. Now my comparison in contemporary times is this guy. I'm sure you all saw Christopher Nolan's Batman. So what he, what Christopher Nolan did was he took the Batman story, which we were all kind of used to hearing, his parents got killed, so he trained, that was Batman. But he, he asked himself, like, what, how, what would it look like if Batman really happened in the real world? How do we imagine that such a character would be pushed into to these lengths. So parang ganon yung project ni Caravaggio, pero with mga Bible stories. And that's sort of where I was with my work downstairs. So I wanted to bring sanctification to ordinary subjects. So there are people that wouldn't ordinarily have the sanctified gaze turned upon them. So in my case, that was middle class Filipino nerds, <laughs> so friends of mine, right? So sanctification is typically construed as a feminizing force, if you think about it, especially in Catholicism. Priests wear dresses, and then a male is only holy when he is neutered, like, right? Bawal sila mag and everything. There's something about uh, holiness in Catholicism that is, that sort of diminishes masculinity in a way, and I wanted to address that. So my intention was to elevate these friends of mine, right? and to, I don't know, inspire others like them, like men who don't typically think of themselves as beautiful. I wanted to say, hey, guess what? You're beautiful. Um, and I encountered a strange problem when I started showing people this work. Not a problem, it's a strange reaction. Ang, re ang reply nila sa akin, or yung comment nila lagi is, bading ba yan? <laughs> Which is, when I thought about it, a really weird question to ask. Why would you ask me that? Ako yung kumukuha. I'm a straight female, and this is what I find beautiful. But that question got me thinking about other automatic modes of seeing. And I realized that the automatic way we look at images is from a male perspective. We assume that the viewer is male. That's why you're asking me if, these, if they're homosexual. Why are they presenting themselves like this to a man? Um, and the answer is they're not. They're presenting it to a woman. So um, that was sort of an interesting automatic mode that I uncovered. I mean, it's not a secret. I, I, I'm sure everyone is familiar with this idea of the male gaze in artwork, that art, most artwork, particularly film, visual art, is created from the perspective of a man. Um, so that's like an automatic thing. We can't help it uh, just because of how society is structured and all of the media that we consume is, is created that way. So. Um, that's sort of my train of thought with this project. I didn't really um, intend to have any solid conclusions about the work. Parang, okay, I made the work and therefore guys can be holy. Parang I, 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 I'm more interested in, in these questions being raised than really presenting any answers. Um, so here are some of the men. So there, that's kind of the end of my presentation. 
Uh, do you, does anyone have any questions? Anyone? Don't lie, I know all of you use it. <laughs> Photoshop, Instagram, Twitter, Basic VCSO app. Mm. Guys, apps the phone. Latian, Latian. Wala. wala, guys. Hindi kayo sa stage ng nitrato nyo. Yung mga 30 shots kayo, kasi sa lang yung kukusi sa Instagram. Okay, the laughter is... They're all lying, uh, I know it. The laughter is the... Uh, anyway, so the question is, how do you... Yeah. How did you ask permission to take? Is this the uh, space? That was in my gym, <laughs> where I lived in Hong Kong. Okay. I did not ask permission. I just walked in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think I wanted to avoid that. So I would choose times of day and I would choose places that were empty. Except for the beach image over here on the, towards the far end. That's the only one I really did in public public. Everything else was sort of done with, uh, without people watching. I think it was because um, I knew that somehow makaka affect yun. Pag, kunyari, hindi siya ginawa in this sort or parang artistic vacuum, I'm kakabahan ako or something. Kasi the other thing is, hindi naman talaga ako model. <laughs> uh, some, I was asked at my opening, is it weird to see so many pictures of yourself on the wall? And I really, my answer was no, because these aren't pictures of me. This is not me. Uh, and that's sort of how I see it. So I think there was this idea na, Na if someone else was watching, that I would sort of revert back to being me, and then that would uh, affect the work. Panganan. Well, technically speaking, these were taken by someone else. I had a friend who was with me who was sort of manning the camera. And th I feel like that's such a weird question because I think photography is so much more than the act of releasing a shutter. But when people get so bent out of shape about it, lalo on Facebook or wherever, there's a flicker, ganun, parang, uy, credit mo naman ako kasi ikaw yung humawak ng phone ko nung nagpakuha ko sa beach. It's like, come on. Uh, photography is a bigger practice than just the ability to release a shutter. Um, so, not to diminish my friend and her ability to shoot me, like she was very, uh, she was a very good human tripod. <laughs> but um, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it made a dif it would make a difference as long as when I was being shot, I knew it would be for this project. Because there are other things that I did aside from posing and uh, conceptualizing the images. I, I edited them, right? I modified them to give them this look. I added the frames. There were so many actions that took place in this process, and it wasn't limited to just the shooting event, which I think some people are tempted to think that that's where photography ends. So, um, yeah, that's where I was on that. Another thing that I've, 
actually forgot to bring up that maybe you guys might be curious about is this work on my left, yung images of Jorge Vargas, that the Vargas Museum allowed me to display alongside the work. Um, so uh, I thought it was interesting. It was an interesting exercise to choose these images. So, oh, uh, 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 paano ba? Nagsabi yung Vargas sa akin na I could look through their archives and select images that I thought would accompany the work well. So I looked through it, and at first I was asking for, do you guys have self-portraits? Are there images there by artists? Si Vargas kasi was an art collector, so he didn't, I don't think he really had many or they were all in the permanent collection. So I said, I said, okay, I think it's more appropriate if we select images of him and put them up in a museum with his name on it. Parang if we're gonna talk about enshrinement and, and sanctification, that's a pretty good example of it. And it's not to, not to sort of diminish the man, he, I'm, I'm not actually 100% sure what he did in his life, but that's a good question to ask anyway, is what did I do? Why do I have a shrine to myself on Facebook? What's, what's so important or valuable about it? Um, and again, I, when, I, when I started doing this project, I think what I was thinking was I was going to be critical of this whole attitude. I was gonna be, um, uh, I was gonna be critical, I was gonna point out these things and then matatauhan yung mga tao and then no one will want to be on Facebook ever again. That's an exaggeration, but it's sort of where I was in terms of conceptualizing kasi I was critical of it. Pero as I did the work and I did my reading, I realized nga na it's something everyone has to do na kasi. Ganun na yung, that's where we are now and that's sort of oh, the world as it is. And if we are critical of the practice, we're sort of, I think we're all coming from different places about it, but for me personally, I sort of discovered that I really can't, that I can't be critical of, of doing this. It's, it's become necessary to exist. So, there. Does anyone else have any questions? It doesn't have to be a smart question. You can ask me a stupid question, if you like. <laughs> I welcome all questions. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay, um, since you talked about the Most of the artworks here were commissioned. So when we look at the images here, just when it by Sandra, which she told us that most of the conceptualization, production is hers, um, hindi pa pa mas patunay pa yung sinasabi kanina na, kasi ito meron siyang tao eh. For example, ito. Ang tao niya dito. So ang mga, ang mga barakada ni Vargas ay sila Fernando Mato. But with this one, uh, she produced uh, the works with uh, her friend, and most of the most of the design or the, the parts of the artwork is done by her. So, kanina pa niya pinto na yung council of friends, di ba? Yung paghiwala yung katolisismo at protestantismo. Kaya may isa lang ang another story. Pero yung point na nasa sabi na kanina, umababa yung kabanalan pababa sa atin into our daily existence. We can all be holy. Kasi may sarili tayo Facebook page. Therefore, you have a Kim Kardashian. A Kim, is it yeah, Kim? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think what we could also think about when we go out of this exhibition is how do we put value in what we project? Uh, it's, a, it's as simple as, you know, us um, wearing our clothes now. How do I look now? Kasi nga, hindi nga sarili nyo. Para itong misay. How do you look now? How do you project yourself? Because of this heat, how do you help it? But, you know, you, you choose your colors of what you wear, diba? Every day, that's every single day when you wake up. Pagpapasok ka ng klase, late ka, anong defense mechanism mo sa prof mo? Anong gagalitin mo imagery sa prof mo para maka-induce ka ng pity? Diba? So, ang nangyayari ngayon is that, you know, from that daily living to this, yung holy, pero it, this is very political, holiness or sanctification, no? Kasi si Vargas was a lawyer, and he was also our uh, secretary secretary. Plus, pagdating kay Sandra, well, 
the first stone me of Sandra, mga person ni Sandra, is tayo yan eh, our everyday living. So I think that's also what we could um, get from this exhibition. No? How do we value the image that we're projecting to, to our friends, to our family, and are the, the images of that we project close to the authentic self that we have? Marami ba tayong characters? Sino ba nag-RPG? Road name games? Online? By the way. Diba marami kayong characters, diba? So, you also do it every day in the real life. So, kapag character mo kay Karen's mo ganito, magsisip yung character mo pag kasama mong patata mo when you're eating or drinking somewhere. You're drinking. Anyway. So, do we have any more questions with imagery? With how do we get one? Yes, one. Yeah. Actually, I'll be commenting now. This was a first image, actually, it's quite striking. So, first, I really remember the work of Nobuyoshi Karaki, the Japanese photographer, actually, very about it. Yes. Thank you. Uh, all right, that's two questions. I'll address the first one first. I uh, wasn't so much inspired by Araki, although familiar ako sa work. I was more of inspired by, kilala niyo ba si Cindy Sherman? So Cindy Sherman is an American photographer who when she was doing her, I think it was her BFA, uh, yung project niya was called Untitled Film Stills. Uh, write it down and look it up when you get home kasi sobrang interesting ng work. So parang nagsa self portrait siya but it was always sort of done in the style of uh, these black and white films from the 70s. Uh, it's considered a pretty important feminist work because she talks about or the project sort of circles around this idea of the many ways in which media conceptualizes women, but it's all the same woman and everything. Parang, parang ganon. So the, the work's really interesting. So, kasi medyo nag-cosplay siya, ganon, nag siya as these characters. And then, mga talaga siyang film stills, but it's all the same lady. Uh, so I was very inspired by her and her process. What was interesting for me about her process is also that when she made the work for school, she didn't really have a big, din mo siya ng thesis about it. She didn't really go, oh, I'm going to make this feminist artwork by putting myself in film. Parang hindi. Parang sa instinct niya lang nagawin. She was like, oh, well, this might be fun. It, it was a very instinctual project for her. I, I learned by reading about it. And then later na lang na, niya na-realize na, oh, this is why I was so driven to make this project 
project. That's why these ideas were so important to me. Uh, so parang ganon, I, I like that idea of process and that's sort of how I ended up making these images. I was very much just moving on instinct and then my thesis advisor was the one that was helping me sort of uh, navigate the meanings and he was giving me things to research and things. So that's a sort of slightly different kind of artistic process than usual where it sounds like the idea came, like I had this like thesis about the art history and the Council of Trent and then I made artwork based on that. It was completely the other way around. I did all this research after I had, I had created the work. So that's one. And the other one was, I'm sorry, it was the second question. What other mediations took place when I was um, trying to visualize the artwork? Uh, it was not important to me, first of all, that it looked anything editorial. I wasn't, that's another thing that, uh, it's, it's another thing I realized that people look for when they come into a show is the commerciality of the work. Can I buy this? Can I put it in my living room? Can I share it with my friends? Um, how do I, I wanna tell a story, but I'm trying to tell it so that nobody knows who I'm talking about. Um, okay. One of my mentors came to the opening and was looking at the work. And what she said to me was, who would, ba, ano, anong ginagawa mo? Hindi ko naiintindihan yung ginagawa mo. Sinong bibili na ito? Yun yung tanong niya sa akin. Tapos sabi ko sa kanya, uh, I don't know. I never, I don't make it so that people can put it in their living rooms. I make it because I had an idea, right? It was very driven by just wanting to see it created rather than any sort of editorial or commercial motivation. And completely unheard of yun sa taong to. Parang hindi niya ma-process. Parang, ha, eh, di ba't mo ginawa? Parang it's so expensive to produce. Nagpunta ka pang school. Talaga, ito lang yun. Parang ganun. Medyo ganun yung ano, reaction niya sa akin. Uh, thankfully, I'm not really... Parang di naman... I don't have a soft skin about things like that. So I was like, all right. Um, I appreciate your feedback. Parang... But, but I'm realizing that that is something that people come to uh, when they look at artwork. It's a very, very common notion. Parang, what are the commercial applications of this skill? You can do this, so let's do something that will, that will earn or is in, in one way or another commercial. And that's okay. That's actually fine. Parang hindi naman siya, like, it, you shouldn't not do that. I understand where that instinct comes from, but uh, there are other reasons to make art. Some are expressive, some are political, some are... Uh, emotional, right? I know I've made artwork because someone broke up with me. What the heck, right? So, parang may mga gan iba iba talaga yung motivation. So my motivation for this was actually mostly academic, because in school in Hong Kong, yung process namin was okay. Next week, may critique tayo, magdala kayo ng work, and then kahit ano, it's like open ended. You just have to bring whatever you're making. Doesn't matter. Walang parameters. Uh, so I was trying to fit into, parang sina, sinasakto ko siya dun sa mga critiques na yun. Parang, ah, may critique next week, I have to have something to show my classmates. And this was just eventually what was coming out. Uh, and because it is academic, hindi siya, it's not driven by like an emotional need to make the work in my head. If my thesis advisor had said for any reason, parang, no, you can't do that, bawal yan. Hindi ko siya gagawin, hindi naman ako, parang, it's not, it's not gonna ruin me or anything like that. And that, uh, so yeah, um, I don't know if I answered your question. I just went off on a completely different tangent, but that's sort of where I am with this project and all of them, really. Okay, as for your stamp, uh, your stamp no? Mm -hmm. Sa likod. So yung association natin, nakita nyo naman yung mga stamp dita sa likod. If you haven't, you can come up later and have a look. Mm. Yes, right. yes. So, iba rin yung conditions yung... Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good question because uh, that happened because I wanted to sort of mimic what happens to stampitas in their actual lifespan because they are bought and sold and then they're given to people for different reasons like 
um, first communion or funerals. I guess you don't give them to someone at their funeral because they'll be dead. But anyway, you give it to their loved ones and stuff. But so that's what happens, right? It's something you give away. You purchase and then you give it away. So I wanted that action to be present in the work, and that's why these are uh, at my orig my first show. If you remember that image, they were for sale. Let's go backwards a bit. Uh, yeah. So they were for sale. Um, and it was interesting because this Hong Kong is not a Catholic country, right? It's pretty a-religious as far as, I mean, compared to the Philippines. But the, these sold pretty well. Like People were very interested in holding and having something to hold and taking something home. So um, yeah. So it was a completely different practice, but it was still kind of performative in a way. Uh, I didn't make them so I could sell them. Selling them just was sort of an effect of installing them, something like that. But it was it is necessary for you to activate the the artwork because stampitas are in the soul. Yes. They're not given away. Um, sino may mga mamuhi ka na ano? Yung mga stampitas sa pitaka, scapulars, okay. So scapulars kasi yung don parang I'm not Catholic so I don't know. Uh, I have friends who had scapulars when they were swimming. Yes. But I think Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Yeah. So she's asking for people at the back. She's asking, bakit flowers yung ginamit ko na pang beautify? <laughs> Tama ba? <laughs> Dun sa aking male models. I think uh, it's a number of things. For me, it's also my aesthetic. I like to make, yung lahat ng crowns na yun, ako yung gumawa. So they were all constructed by me. I like making them. So I just, I, I, I don't know. It's my aesthetic. I like I like how it looks. It's very pleasing to me, and so I just sort of just juxtaposed those two things that I th that I found sort of beautiful or pleasing to to my eye, which is these guys who are my friends and I love them very dearly, 
and these uh, little creations that I was making. So um, the other thing about that project, again, to reveal a bit of how the work was conceived, I was making them before I realized what I was doing, before I, I, I really fully understood like si Caravaggio and stuff. All of those references were given to me uh, after I had created the work. So the story nun is when I moved to Hong Kong, I really didn't know anything about studio lighting. I'd, like zero. As in, hindi ako nagiilaw kasi yung shoot, yung, what my background is, I actually began shooting as a wedding photographer, so you really don't really have much cause to know much about studio lights. And then when I got to Hong Kong, that my first class was graduate level studio lighting, so it was very advanced studio lighting, and all of my classmates were super galing, ganun. Tas ako, medyo wink, parang, ah, ngayon lang nakahawak nito, sorry eh. So, uh, I was very, uh, I was very far behind, uh, further than my classmates. So I would practice when I'd come home to Manila. I'd ask my friends, "We shoot tayo, kasi di ako marunong. I need to practice and not get rusty while I'm on break." And I would shoot them, and then I would bring the work back to Hong Kong and show my teacher and say, "Hey, so can you critique this work? Can you give me feedback? What do I need to improve? I'm just practicing." And he was the one that noticed. He said, "Do you realize that this goes very well with your thesis?" You're making ganyan ganyan. So he, he sent me all of these images ni Caravaggio. He said, your use of light and some of the ideas behind it, I don't think you realize. Um, all sort of connect. So yeah, no, magbasa ka and stuff. So I read about it and then that's when I realized that all of these uh, connections were being made uh, in the work. So yun, so it's nothing specific. I wasn't really looking at a specific artwork, although the, the exact reference he gave me was Artwork ni Caravaggio called Bacchus. Um, parang ba something called yung god na si Bacchus, who's the god of like, parang excess or something. He's always drinking and like having sex and stuff. Do you know this one? <laughs> yeah, he's a Greek god. Yeah, yeah. So if you look up the artwork by Caravaggio, he actually has a giant flower crown on his head. Na it's covered in like grapes and stuff. So he showed me that. He was like, it looks a lot like this work. So read about it and see what you can find. Maybe you can incorporate it into your thesis. So that's sort of how that happened. A lot of uh, instinctual art making on my end. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Um, OK. If no one else has anything to say, I just have a f few things I want to show you before I close my presentation. If you are interested in, has anyone here listened to podcasts? <laughs> I'm going to plug my podcast because I have one. Um, wait, let me show you. So it's called The Artista Review. What we do is we talk to artists in different fields about what it's like to be a Filipino artist, artist sorry, um, in this country making work. No, we don't just talk to fine artists, although we have some of those. We talk to musicians, talk to directors, we talk to Gerald Darug after General Luna came out and everything. So we interview people and just have a conversation with them about what it's like to be them. So I host it with a friend of mine named Pauline Lacanilao. Um, so check it out if you listen to podcasts. Okay, siya pang traffic, swear. Keep your brain going. Uh, and then if you want to see any of my work, this is my website. I have a bunch of other projects and stuff. And my contact details din ako dyan. If you want to ask me anything, I swear, sobrang okay lang. I love to talk, obviously. Haha. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming.